Hey there guys and welcome back. Oh, two things to go over. I figured I'd put them in the same video instead of making two separate videos, which would be really short. So we'll get into this first. We'll start with the most exciting thing, the new game mode discussion thing that they said. So on this live stream, the name will be Gwen Arena Big Whoop. The entry fee is 150 or or two dollars. So same thing as Hearthstone, 150 or to get in. The run ends after nine successful contracts or three deaths, which is three losses or nine wins. Whichever one you get first, the words get better the more and more that you win a course. And you can see the nickname of the player defeated on each contract. Release date is not confirmed yet. Arena is a work in progress. They didn't give us a release date yet, but we already know that streamers are able to play on the closed PTR. Or at least some of the bigger ones because they faced a bigger streamer on the closed PTR. So... Well, the Polish one. And then deck building. No restrictions at all when building the deck. Faction, card rarity, number of duplicates. So, this is pretty cool. Because, yeah, you can <laughs> draft a ton of golds. You can draft from any faction at any time, which makes it really interesting. And you can have multiple duplicates of golds or silvers. You can draft premium cards. They are chose. They are come randomly as choices. It doesn't matter if you have them on your collection. This is kind of weird. The fact that you can draft random premiums in your draft deck, I don't, wouldn't really care about that because I would never draft a card just because it's premium in draft mode. But hey, I guess it's something. Uh, you pick each card from a pool of four of the same rarity. This this is cool because usually it's three. With four, this leaves you with less chances of being screwed with a choice that you can't use. So that is awesome. You pick a leader at the end of drafting. <laughs> this is interesting because, I mean... Picking a leader at the end of drafting, usually you want to pick your leader first so he can draft depend on your leader. But with it being at the end, that's going to be weird. And you pick the leader, it says, at the end of drafting. Like So I think you can just pick your leader, which actually that would be even better. Because then you can just pick any leader and which leader goes best for the deck that you're drafting. So that'll be awesome if that's the case. Rewards, guaranteed prize is one keg, even if you break a contract, the contract with no contracts completed. Pretty cool. It's the way it is in Hearthstone. You get a you get a pack even if you go 0 and 3. So no matter what, if you put in 150, you're guaranteed a pack. Granted, a pack is usually only 100, but the fact that you can get better rewards if you do better is what makes Arena better. Like this, nine contracts completed offer among other rewards a premium gold card. So if you get all nine wins without hitting the three losses first which is actually easier than Hearthstones, you probably get like a couple, a pack, some ore, some scraps, some meteorite powder, and a premium gold card. So, and the rewards vary in between that for however much you get. So probably if you go 3-3, three and three, you're going to get basically 150 ores worth of stuff. And if you go 9-3, and three, it's going to be like an infinite arena run, and you get a lot of other rewards. So no complete info on the reward system yet, but... It's looking like how it usually is. <laughs> Bonuses, new card board comes with arena game mode. We got the board right here. This is the new arena board. It looks pretty nifty. So I don't know if this is going to be something that you can unlock and like use in the regular mode or not because they also say new boards are coming with a single player campaign Thronebreaker. So that'd be pretty cool if you could unlock like alternate boards to use while you're playing because I think I'd like to play on this one. The arena board looks awesome. And, yeah, that's about it for all we got for the arena mode, so yeah, some more hype on that. And then the second thing is the fact that we got a new Faction Wars, and this is probably the best way to do it. This new Faction Wars is definitely the best one. Scully told her Skullga, who will win the new Faction Challenge? So when you start it up, you pick a side, which... You just go over and it'll say Faction Wars, you click it, and then you pick either Skellige or Skullytal. And then that's the side you're supporting. So you're not, like, if you win more with Skellige, even though you supported Skullytal because you want the Skullytal stuff, you're going to get the Skullytal rewards, and you're not like, oh, crap, I can't play more Skellige wins than I can Skullytal if I want the Skullytal stuff. And then your rewards are dependent on how many wins you get with that class. So it's not like, oh, the winning side only gets the good stuff. No, it doesn't matter which side you pick. Matters how many wins you get with the class that you supported. I picked Skully Toll because their border looks slightly better, even though you guys know I love Skellige. But the border looks a little bit better, I think, on Skully Toll. So I went with that one. We see you get a title at 10 wins, 100 meter rate powder at 20, 
30 you get your porter, at 40 you get 200 scraps, and 50 you get 3 kegs. Which I mean, 50 obviously won't be too hard for some people to do, because I mean, you got people with 200 wins in ladder mode two days in to the event. So I mean, that's 3 more kegs. That's a pretty good chunk for 50 wins, just as a little bonus reward, I mean, if you're doing your dailies and stuff anyway. So that's really cool. And the border's the same, 30 wins, you get the border. So I really like this way. This is definitely the way you sh they should be doing it, and it's definitely the best way. They keep they were trying other things. I hope they stay with this way, because this one's the best in my opinion. Just because you pick a side, and then you can go and support that side. Like if uh, last time they did it, I had to make sure I didn't play more games with Nilfgaard or get more wins with Nilfgaard than I did with monsters, because I wanted the monsters border, and I was kind of limiting me on. <laughs> Not only like what decks I could run, just what I wanted to fool around with and stuff, just that way I made sure that didn't happen. Now, you don't have to worry about it. You pick a side, and then only the wins that you get with that side will go towards the thing. So, that is awesome, and that's about it for this one, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one, and have a good one.